Well, as promised, here's the world-famous Tubby the Cat, who is kind enough to invite us into his very own home. Right, Tubby? <laughs> you know, Tubby is typical of the growing number of Americans who have the latest in home viewing technology, a laser disc. Well, to see which lasers will stroke your fur rather than pull your whiskers, or will catapult your visual sensations, or cause a sensual catastrophe, <laughs> who better than the dean of porn, historians, author of Only the Best, the man who has seen more adult films than any other critic, Mr. Jim Holliday. Thank you, Marilyn. And since Tubby the Cat was kind enough to invite us into his home with LaserDisc, gives me the opportunity to set you straight on this new innovation in adult home entertainment. Take it this way. If you have a videotape machine and you want to record, use beta. If you want to watch pre-recorded tape, use VHS. If you don't follow that rule, it's not my fault, you're a simpleton. Now, if you want a crisp, clear picture, laser disc blows beta and VHS away. You will not see a more enhanced image on your screen than with laser. And when it comes to the world of adult critics, any imbecile could get his name on every paper every month if he saw the best film ever made every month, as some people are prone to do. I don't. I saw the best film ever made 10 years ago. I've seen it at least 20 times since to make sure. It was made by Radley Metzger under the name Henry Paris. It's called The Opening of Misty Beethoven. It's quite simply the best, most erotic adult picture ever made. And we'll start off with a clip from that. And the clip you just saw is very rev revolutionary for the time in which it was filmed. Remember, it was made 10 years ago. Now, as to what's available on disc, oh boy, are you lucky. Because as with video, where you've got 6,000 assorted titles to choose from, and 80% of them are crapola, the people that uh, manufactured disc have only pressed some of the very best ever made. So tonight, I'm going to separate for Tubby five, four piles. We're going to give him four piles and show you some of the titles available. And they will be in the categories of superlative. They will be in the categories of couples-oriented. They will be for tourists, and they will be garbage. Okay, we all know that Debbie Does Dallas is available on disc. It's regarded as a classic. It's merely a little bit better than routine, so we'll put it in. Check it out. Maybe you'll like it. Now we've got something that you want just for the sound. It, uh, if you're not interested in the action with Marilyn, it's insatiable too, but it does have the stereo digital sound that makes this probably the single closest thing you're going to come to superb high fidelity in your home. And by the way, the movie's also a bargain. And Deep Throat. Everybody knows about it. It has been recut, is now uh, channeled in stereo, so that uh, if you want to look at Deep Throat, at least you'll see the same old pictures. You'll be hearing it differently. In my book, Only the Best, I did sort of a roundup. I asked 15 of my expert friends, as well as all the films that have been given awards, this film, The Ecstasy Girls, made by Robert McCallum and Harold Lyme, finished fourth fourth best adult film ever made. What more can I say? This is in the superior top category. You can't go wrong with that. Right behind it, we've got Devil and Miss Jones Part 2, Henri Pichard, 1983. Superlative entertainment, if it does have a weakness, it's not that hot sexually, but put it in the next highest category. Ah, Urban Cowgirls, 1980 co-winner in the AFAA Film of the Year. Put this in the garbage and pass. It's really just routine. I'm being too critical on it, but still, if you've seen it, you want to pass. Lisa DeLeo, and that's how it's pronounced, folks. It's DeLeo, it's not Delu. Girl from SEX. This is for people that want raunchy, hardcore sex and could care less about the necessary accompanying accoutrements. Put it in the second pile. Armand Weston, 1978. This is the second best adult film ever made and the best pure film. It is as clever as you're ever going to find. comes with my highest endorsement. It finished fifth on the poll in my book. 
center spread girls, a perfect example of routine harmless fluff that's not bad and you'll probably think more highly of it than I do. I don't dislike it, I just don't jump over doing cartwheels about it. Put it in the second pile. Outlaw ladies, ah yes, feminism with raunch. Henri Pichard's 1981 film of the year finished 12th on the survey of all-time greatest films and it gives the ladies the opportunity to say, hey, we're people too and we like to screw. Also available on disc, what can I say? You know it's in my all-time top 10. This film, among my expert friends, finished second only to Misty Beethoven. This is insatiable, or if you want to care to pronounce it right, insatiable. It's Marilyn's best film. Although they never say anything in there about this, Ron Jeremy plays the perfect Jewish klutz. He and Merle Michaels, it's good fun, it's good fluff, it's not particularly hot, so we'll put this in pile number three. Oh, brother. This is the reason the X-rated critics formed their own organization. This film won six awards. Uh, of the approximately 50 titles available on Laserdisc, 40 of them are worth at least a look, and probably 30 of them are honestly worth owning. This is a flat-out, absolute, 100% unmitigated piece of shit. Don't even bother. David Fraser and Svetlana, Bad Girls, the film that in 1981 introduced the whole concept of four fresh new female faces. It's fluff bunny, cupcake city, all those chauvinistic sexist adjectives that mean girls in a sex film romp. It's among the best of the breed, but we'll put it in pile number two because it only finished in the 30s on my survey. Up and coming. Marilyn can sing, Marilyn can act, you also know what Marilyn can do. She does all three in this film. It's worth it. I like it. This is my idea of a couple's film because the sex is also hot to accompany the story. A Scent of Heather, made by one of the finer filmmakers nobody's ever heard of, Philip Drexler Jr. It's Veronica Hart, very tender stuff. If you're in the mood for soap opera Victorian style, You'll definitely want to look at it. It's in the top 40 of the survey and worth owning. The Mistress. For those who disagree with me, try The Mistress. You'll love it. It's a couple's movie. Uh, doesn't have particularly hot or erotic sex, but it does have explicit penetration. If that's all it takes to get you off, you'll want The Mistress. Put it in pile three. For reasons I can't get into, Bob Chin made this film with Hyapatia Lee, Shauna Grant, and Rose Linda Kimball. The Young Like It Hot, Bob Jin said it was okay for me to take co-credit. This is kind of my movie, I won't review it, other than to say every critic gave it their highest recommendation. This is fun and fluff. And it's not supposed to be artistic, it's supposed to be pretty people doing what they do best. Bob Chin always delivers. And finally, a film that I had kind of overlooked. I'd had it in my second 10, when it came time to figure out the 101 hottest sex scenes, four scenes came from this movie. And I want you to see a clip of it right now, probably the single hottest sex scene ever filmed with John Leslie and with a woman named Jackie O'Neill who only appeared in this film. It's called The Other Side of Julie, and it is superior eroticism with all the plot and story that modern women want. A quick rundown on Laserdisc. You know that... Uh, with laser, you're better off than you are with tape because you stand only one chance in about 40 of winding up with a clunker. And since those are the films, Tubby, what do you think we throw it back to Marilyn? Isn't she the cat's meow?